Good evening and salutations, my BNB fans. Wow, this whole Hope versus Steffi thing is heating up. Um, see, for everyone else, this is kind of like, well, just a typical Wednesday. But for me, um, damn. I mean, they really don't even, they really don't like each other. Up until the point where Steffi was like, you know, um, Rich has two families. Two families. Oh, okay, because, I mean, you know, under her impression, under my impression, I thought y'all were just all one big family. You made that damn clear that, uh, it's y'all, and then, then there's us. Hey, Steffi. Um, wow. I mean, granted, I get it. You don't sit there and walk in somebody's house, start accusing them of this, that, and the third, and then try to put them on notice. Like, are you kidding me? Um, so I, I completely understand where Steffi's coming from. I mean, there was one point where Taylor's like, kids, kids. Um, listen, you might want, you can, you can talk to your daughter like that, but, uh, Hope is a grown ass woman with a job and marriage and kids. And you have the audacity to sit there and call her a child? Are you kidding? Okay. All right. Sure. Um, so you go back and forth. Taylor even offers to sit there and help Brooke. You know, she's going through stuff. And, um, you know, Hope is like, no, nah, no, nah, we're good. We just, you know, want you to kind of stay clear and uh, not interrupt what, you know, my dad and, I mean, what, what Ridge and my mom got going on. Because they don't need that. They don't need any distractions or um, you getting in the way pretty much. Okay? So, she says that she leaves. At this point, Steffi is fuming. I mean, if you could just picture fire just coming out of her ears and nose. That's literally what it was like. She was like, I'm sick of those damn Logan. I'm sick of my dad always siding with them versus us. And they don't appreciate, you know, he doesn't appreciate us. And he doesn't appreciate Thomas. He just has time for Brooke and her shenanigans and hope and his, you know, her dad and all this other crap and just, you know, doing all this stuff to my, you know, to our, you know, my poor dad. And he doesn't even see it because he's involved with them and this, that, and the third. And she's just like, yeah. I'm not to saying that I want you to fight for a married man, but I want you to fight for a married man. That's that's literally what she just said. In one breath, she was like, I don't want you to sit there and fight for a married man because, you know, it's not, it's not right. But I, I do need you to sit there and fight. And if that just happens to be for Riz, then I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> that is more or less what she said. <sighs> Oh, Grace, 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 Grace. You are starting to work my nerves. Been here for a total of, um, what, two or three episodes, give or take, and already you are pretty testing my damn patience, aren't you, girl? So, you know, Paris and, and um, Paris and Grace are talking, and, you know, she's all happy that she's staying and everything like that, and, you know, she's there, and, you know, just whatever. And Carter walks into the room, and the energy just changes. Energy just, just changes, you know? Because now it was just this hostile energy. And the look on Grace's face, it almost looked like she didn't want to sit there and shake his hand. And she was like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, sweetheart, first of all, your daughter was a huge, huge disappointment okay just all around was just a terrible human being who wound up cheating on carter because she was too stupid and couldn't handle a relationship but you have your dad so you sit there and talk about all oh, my daughters are gonna do just fine listen up <laughs> until a point I just start to recently realize um, what a flake Paris is. And uh, Zoe was a human 
dumpster fire. <laughs> you got one daughter that's trash. You got another daughter that's a flaky POS. And then they have you. I mean, you must be like the worst of the three. Like, literally. I mean, I know that, you know, they had a dad too, and I'm pretty sure that played a hand in it. So I'm not just coming at you, but, uh, hmm. Wow, lady. And that's what it was like for the entire um, duration until I think um, Carter left or Grace left. It was just her looking at him like he was the worst person on the planet. How dare you hurt my poor Zoe? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to say this and I'm going to move on. Karen's come in all colors and all genders. Just gonna throw that out there. So after that awkwardness, um, one of the parties left. I don't really remember which one because I just don't really remember which one. Now Ridge came in there. And Ridge was sitting there talking to Grace because at this point the tension needed to go somewhere. So yeah, Ridge came in there, was sitting there talking up Paris because you know she's uh, <laughs> you know the gift that just keeps on giving, and um, you know Grace was apologizing for her husband doing something that I was not aware of. Um, coming from a good family, right? Right, Grace? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you know, it's water on the bridge. Everything is good. No worries. And it's all good. So, things lighten up for a little bit. And you can just tell that Carter was like, yeah. Like, he just had that awkward look in his face. And, you know, here's the thing. I admire Carter in this instance. Because I know that the mother wants to just go all out on Carter. You know, Carter, Carter's going to do the responsible thing. Carter's going to do the good thing. He's going to sit there and take it. Because that's the kind of person that Carter is. And uh, Carter is a much better human being than um, I can only strive to be in a situation like that. And watch my channel for a while. You know there's times that I could just be an absolute dick. I mean, we all have that capacity. But, um, let's just put it this way. Carter, Carter is, is, is going to handle this. And, and, and be a shining example of, um, of something that I can only strive to be. Because, um, my sister didn't say I don't have the restraint that um that man has. So um good job, Carter. Good job. Now, before Ridge left, because at first it seemed like he was not going to go anywhere except for maybe the bathroom, he was watching Brooke like a hawk and making sure that he was there to support her. And, you know, Brooke is still lying straight to this man's face and saying, I don't know what the trigger is. All I know is that it was New Year's Eve and I want to see you. You know, every time you say that, you're putting guilt on this man. And I'm not snitch to saying that he's perfect. I'm not snitch to saying that he hasn't made mistakes. But every time you sit there and talk about New Year's Eve, you don't know what caused this except for you weren't there and I was all alone. You keep putting guilt on him. But yet you're sitting there saying, no, you can leave me alone. I'll be just fine. I can sit there and be home alone. I, I, I can't write this. Like, I literally cannot write this at this point. Now, Hope does come in there at some point and, you know, she wants to know what was, went down between her and her dad. I mean, hell. She hasn't even seen Deacon in a while. Which is a shame, because I like Deacon. You know why I like Deacon? Deacon reminds me 
Well, I like Deacon for a couple of reasons. But Deacon reminds me of um, Johnny from Cobra Kai. Like, they both have that very... 80s in them. That's just ingrained in them. It's ingrained in the way that they talk. It's ingrained in the way that they move, their energy. Um, and they both seem like they're people that were doing bad and that they're trying to make up for it. I think that's why I kind of like Deacon. I'm just watching Cobra Kai. I got a long list ahead of me. I will get that up. Anyway, Hope hasn't even seen Deacon in a minute. And, you know, she's like, what's going on? Like, what is it? You know, is it me? Did I push him on you? What is going on? Did I did I leave you too soon? Like, I would have been there for you. I was like, bro, do you understand that by keeping this secret, you're still hurting the people that you claim to love? Hope is feeling guilty as hell. Because, you know, she felt like she failed you as a daughter, not being there when you when she felt like you needed it. Pushing her, her dad away, making her feel like, you know, she pushed her dad on you, and now she's not even seeing her dad. All because you couldn't just put on your big girl pants and say, hey, listen, I did something. I was drinking too much. I don't know what happened. One thing led to the next. And I wound up making out with Deacon. And I woke up next to him. Even though he was on top of the covers. And apparently, that doesn't count. So, you know. You know, in a lot of ways, I still do feel like this show deserves an hour. Because um, you could just cover and tackle so much more. But... You know, I guess giving it a half an hour, you would sit there and think it would force them to just kind of push more of a storyline in there. But if anything, it just makes them decide, trickle, 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 trickle. I give you a little bit at a time, and you take it and you like it. That's... <sighs> anyway, I feel like that's about it. So, if I missed anything else, please write it down in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe and I will see you in the next video.